This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, your hosts, Jerem Jordan and Jason Shepard. BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Wednesday, March 9th. Thanks for being here. I'm Jerem Jordan, teamed up with the man who still has a franchise quarterback who has won a Super Bowl and lost a Super Bowl. That'd be nice. Jason Shepard. That's right. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is still my quarterback. Uh, and now we have a new quarterback in our division. Doesn't change yeah, yes, the pecking yes, 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 Doesn't do. change the pecking order. Yeah. Mahomes is still on top. Yes. But uh, your Maybe. boy, uh, Russell Wilson. And, and you're, you're paying respects to his yes. time in Seattle. I wore this last night. To a movie that you and I, that you were also at. Yes, we will get into this later. I also slept in this jersey. Okay, that's. And I am wearing it today as well. I'm going to go a full 24 hours. Did you purposely sleep in it, or did you just happen to fall asleep without changing? On purpose. I'm just milking the moment. This is perhaps the last day I can wear my Russell Wilson jersey. It's kind of a bit creepy. Not as creepy as the movie we saw last (laughs) night. The Batman. the Batman. By the way, from now on, I'm calling you the Jerem. <laughs> yes. Nothing makes you sound older uh, <laughs> than when you add the before something you don't need to. Like, oh, what are you doing? I'm watching the BYU Sports Nation. I'm on the Facebook. <laughs> but it, it's old, but it's also kind of hip. No, it's not. Because it, No, it kind of is. No. Okay. I'm just trying to convince myself because <laughs> I use that a lot. I want to tell you how bad my day was yesterday, okay? Uh, it got better because we went to the movie. That was did I, by the way, did I break that news to you? You did. Okay. Someone else messaged me as well. But, um, yeah, I was at home just doing whatever uh, for a few minutes. And, yeah, get the text about Russ. Uh, watch the BYU women's game. <sighs> Find out after the movie that uh, Bobby Wagner is also released. A lot of emotions, a lot of emotions. So let's jump right into it. Here's your show lineup. Down go the women in the title game. What now? We'll break it down. Plus, Jeff Judkins weighs in with Spencer Linton. Blind resume. We're going to play that coming up later in the program. Will the men's team stack up to maybe barely make it in against the competition? We'll assess some numbers there. Plus, day so poo Tyson Williams gets Tyler Huntley in a <laughs> BYU shirt. But first, some headlines. BYU women's basketball falls to Gonzaga in the WCC tournament title game yesterday, 71-59. Ah! I know. In the loss, Shaylee Gonzalez posted a double-double, 16 points and 12 rebounds. Paisley Harding also added 14 points. Both players were named to the all-tournament team. BYU now waits for Selection Sunday to see where they will fall in the big dance. Also, this just in, Shaylee Gonzalez has been named one of five finalists for the Becky Hammond Mid-Major Player of the Year Award. The winner will be announced around the Final Four. She could win that. Absolutely. Uh, She could totally win that. The men are still second out in Lenardi's bracket and a 12 seed in Jerry Palm's bracket. Let's hope that Jerry is... We're always Better team Jerry. Jerry. We're all team Jerry here. There's no <laughs> question about that. Team J- Jerry, 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 Jerry. Yeah. All right. Without any fights two, breaking two out. Two was enough. Let's let's do that without any fights breaking out. Okay. BYU's Sadie Minor Van Tassel wins the MRGC Gymnast of the Week honors for the eighth week in a row. Wow. Eight, two months. Two months she has been winning this thing. It's amazing. Following a dominant performance against Washington and Illinois State, Sadie also won vault and floor specialist of the week, while teammates Haley P2 and Brittany Viscoskis were honored with bar and floor specialist of the week as well. P2 set the record for bars, posting the highest score in program history since 2004. Not bad, as seen on the BYU TV app. Men's golf finished sixth at the... BYU TV app? Yeah. At BYU TV app. See, it doesn't work on that one. <laughs> the men's golf finished sixth at the Lampkin Invitational in San Diego. Zach Jones led the Cougars with an 18th place finish. Women's golf finished ninth at the Julie Inkster Meadow Club Collegiate. The Cougars' next tournament is next month at the Silverado Showdown in Napa, California. The only child dropped a double-double for the Salt Lake City Stars last night in a win. 10 points, 11 rebounds. 108-102 against the Texas Legends. No word on if Chuck Norris suited up for Texas. <laughs> it's a battle of two former Cougars overseas when Jake Toulson will face Matt Harms today in Germany. Yeah, BG Gottingen. Yeah, I wasn't sure Skyliners. how to say it, so I just Frankfurt. It. Frankfurt I could do. Frankfurt. All rise and shout. 
It's time for what's trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's what's trending on BYU Sports Nation. Does this good? The West Coast Conference tournament is over. It was not good. Nine. Uh, nine. <laughs> du hast. <laughs> Neither BYU team did exactly what we were hoping for, okay? We didn't need the men to win the tourney. Right. We did need the women to win, win the tourney. Didn't happen. So which was the more disappointing outcome, and what kind of effect will it have on the postseason for each? Well, look, I mean, the way I'm going to answer this is who was affected the most by it, and that's the men. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think that's probably the most disappointing because they needed it more than what the women needed it. BYU men, they were on the bubble. They needed that. The women were securely in, regardless of what happened. They're going to the NCAA tournament, and they're still going to be a fairly high seed. Yes. In fact, Charlie Cream was on the, uh, the broadcast yesterday of the, the, the game, and they were asking him different scenarios in terms of wins and losses for BYU. And, you know, the, for those that were concerned, like, oh, BYU lost, so they, they missed out on a chance to move up, they were not going to move up, and, and Charlie even reiterated that, that the committee had already decided BYU was not moving up. So even with the win yesterday, the women's team was not going to get a, a higher seed. He said there's even a chance they stay at five, even with the loss. He says it's also possible that they could drop to a six. So, so the loss in the, in the big picture for the women, it's probably not going to affect them too much. But for the men, they needed that win because they were on the bubble. And even if, they, if, even if they won, I think most of us felt if they won, they were in. But now you have to wait. And so I think that the loss for the men affected them more, and their postseason is much more uncertain. Yes, absolutely. It is disappointing that the women did not win the tourney. For as good as this team was yeah. this year, to not win that game was tough because what we've been saying, and it feels like the team has agreed with us, is we don't get enough respect. Right. What the heck? Well, in the biggest game of the year, they didn't win it, right? Um, so that's very disappointing. I don't know which country gets the WCC tournament title shirts from BYU, but <laughs> I hope it's someone good, right? That was a bummer. It was a real bummer. But, but that team's in the tourney. They're making the dance. They're probably not affected a ton. They weren't going to host anyway. Right. Put the Devos on blasters. It doesn't even matter, right? That decision is made easy. And so here we are. The, the, the men, yes, it is more disappointing because it costs them the NCAA tournament in, in all likelihood. You beat San Francisco, you're in, baby. You're in. Um, and, and we're not, we're still sweating, but now we're like drenched on Sunday, right? <laughs> Hoping, praying. We probably didn't have to hope or pray, although you should pray consistently, right? It's a good, it's a good day for it to happen, though, on, this, on Sunday. Yeah. Well, prayer should go up every day, not just on one day of the week. One time I was playing a church hymn, like on a Wednesday, my sister goes, when I was a kid, my sister goes, it's not Sunday. Hey, every day, okay? <laughs> it was disappointing to lose to San Francisco. And now San Francisco's in for the first time uh, since 98 to the NCAA tournament. But the women, they still have a shot to do what we've been talking about, which is, listen, if this team actually is the best team in BYU history, because they just had the best regular season in BYU history. No, no one's won 25 yeah. games before like that. Is that they have to go to the Sweet 16. That's the farthest BYU's ever been. They've done it twice, what, 02 and 14, I think. So, you know, time, time to prove it. And this team's really good. They didn't shoot the ball well yesterday. Uh, Gonzaga took Gonzaga's it to them. Gonzaga's defense was very good yesterday. Yes, and it's ju I'm just tired of seeing Gonzaga win in Vegas. I, it just isn't a thing I want to see anymore. I would rather see Kansas or Baylor do it, which we will see soon enough, right? But, um, yeah, B and how often will BYU on men or women's side – especially women, because it's more realistic, yeah. have a chance to play for a conference tournament title. It's not going to happen a ton in the Big 12. Like, it, it will be significantly tougher, obviously. So that was disappointing because it, it might, hopefully next year the BYU women do it, but it might be the last opportunity you have in a minute. Right. It, look, the way I look at this yesterday, and, and we obviously had the game, besides it being on, on ESPN, one of the ESPN networks, and we also had it on BYU Radio, and... I did an interview prior to the game with Jeff Judkins that we ran during halftime. And he said that, you know, this, this team's not getting the credit we feel we deserve, but we are going to be judged on what we do in this tournament and in the NCAA tournament. 100%. So he knows that regardless of what they did in the regular season, 
ultimately, they're going to be judged on what they did in Vegas. Yes. Now we know how that played out. But also what they do going into the NCAA tournament. The thing that I think angers me most about the situation and what happened is all season long, and I still feel this way even after the loss, I still felt like the women's team was underseeded all year long. I felt they deserved to be higher than a five. This now gives people that didn't want to give BYU the credit, they see, we told you. And I still don't buy it. I still believe BYU deserved, look, if they're going to slip, maybe now they slip to a five because they should have been higher than a five, in my opinion, to begin with. That's well, the, what angers me a little bit is it gives yeah. people that didn't want to give like them when credit. like you're angry, by the way. The, the ammunition to say, <laughs> see, we told you so. And, and I still don't think it's an argument. I still believe they should have been ranked higher. We know the committee has not valued BYU as high as a four because they have released the top 16 the last couple of weeks. And yeah, so he's not been in. and they're not in it. So maybe BYU is the first five and maybe they're the last five or something. It would be a real disappointment if BYU was a six. You're telling me BYU goes 26 and six, well, or six or, and three, 26 and, and three. And Cream said it's possible. Yes. It's a five or a six. Like, if, it, if it's anything outside of that, I'd be shocked. I'm, I'm thinking of five on Sunday. Which, by the way, the women's uh, tournament, for the first time this year, 68 teams. So they have a first four as well. And they will have a selection Sunday as well so that you can get those games played earlier in the week. So Sunday, it's the men and women's tournament selection committee, uh, you know, releasings that we are watching. It's, it's new this year. And that's exciting. We know the women are in. The men more than likely are not, um, which, you know, they're going to be a top seed in the NIT and probably host a game. And <sighs> Okay, I want to go to something that you said a minute ago. In we'll get up of, for it on game day. Yeah, and tired, <laughs> tired of losing to Gonzaga, right? Yes. Okay, all right. Tired I'm, of those I'm talking. I'm talking to a certain group of people out here. There are a lot of BYU fans, and, and I actually, you may be one of them. I'm, I'm curious, because I, I think I've heard Talk, you say but, something. But I, but I want you to address the okay, camera okay, as I'm, if I'm not here. Okay, all right. <laughs> there are a lot of BYU fans that are okay. Like, they were, they're fine rooting for Gonzaga. They're fine with this. I'm not fine with this. I'm tired of losing to Gonzaga. I'm tired of Gonzaga winning everything. So I don't want to hear any more BYU fans say, oh, I'm a, but, but I, I like Gonzaga. I'm okay with, no, 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 no. <laughs> if you feel that way, I'm not sure we can be friends anymore. Jason, we're not friends anymore. <laughs> uh, I don't even know if we were friends to, to begin with. Uh, the I, here's I'm the, so tired of this, and I don't understand the, well, we can still root for Gonzaga. I, let, I can't. I just can't do it. Let me, let me tell you why I've rooted for the men in particular. Because I don't believe BYU is going to win in Vegas anyway. I'm not talking about the regular season per se. I'm talking about I want them to be so good that if BYU wins that game, it's a huge win. I love that part of it. We're going to have Kansas and Baylor and Texas Tech in a similar fashion, right? And then are we, are we going to pull a conference affiliation excited in the postseason if a Big 12 team goes to the Final Four? Like, hey, reppin'. Like the SEC does this, they we like will love for a while. It, right? <laughs> yes, so <laughs> the Gonzaga, conference pride will still be there for a while. I'm okay kissing the the ring on the men's side. On the women's side, no, BYU was the better team. Should have won. Yeah, you know what I mean. Oh yeah, for I the last two years, I don't, I don't root for St. Mary's in the regular season. If you, you know, and like Utah, if Utah lost every game all year, every sport, like I'd be fine with that. That's just that's part of the rivalry. That's part of how I feel. I respect those that feel the same way about BYU. Whatever. With, with Gonzaga, it's like, we entered their league. They own this place. Sometimes we've won some games, and it's been awesome, but it is what it is. St. Mary's, we feel like we're on a similar plane, yeah. so we, and we're not with Gonzaga. BYU is not on the same plane in men's basketball as Gonzaga, clearly, right? But St. Mary's, absolutely. See, I feel that so way. So that's where the, yes. the, it, it's see, like, Arr! I feel the same way you do about St. Mary's. But I also feel the same way about against Gonzaga. I, I do not want Gonzaga to win in any sport, whether it's, ba whether it's baseball, they've it's done basketball. No they've like, done nothing to tick me off in men's basketball. Yeah, I just, I, like, I don't. Winning isn't enough. When my you team do doesn't, when my team isn't the one that's winning, I don't want the teams that win to win. Does that make sense? Somebody's got to win. It's petty, <laughs> but you know what? So is being a fan. It's part yes. of it. I guess I'm less fanny over, well, I'm more of a fan of Gonzaga men's basketball. I'm like, hey, I like the way they play. I like what they do. They represent what BYU also is trying to represent, which is like, hey, we're like a, 
you know, a, a high major trying to have a major impact in that particular sport, even in football. Hey, independent. Like, they represent that element where I'm like, oh, someone's doing it. It's not just the big schools, right? And, then, and, and they beat down the Pac-12. I like that, too. So there's things to like. So our question today, do you actually root for Gonzaga? We should just change it to that. <laughs> Which was the more disappointing outcome at the West Coast Conference Tournament in Las Vegas? Spencer at the slots or the two basketball teams? Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Jackson Kazir on Twitter. The men's game versus San Francisco. The women are still going to get a high seed, so that's not big of a deal for them. The men likely aren't going to make the tournament just because of that one game. Well, it's more than that one game, but yes. Uh, yesterday, talking to Jerry Palm, he said, I said, if BYU does not make it on Sunday, what was the reason they said? And he said the Pacific loss. So it's like, <clears throat> that one That one. Aim. Uh, David and Alicia Woolsey on Instagram. You can weigh in on Facebook Did as well. Did they both chime in on this? I think they have a shared account on Instagram. The women's game, because they just smashed Gonzaga the last time they played them. And the buzzer beater at last year's tournament. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And our girls have been ju- uh, just been so dominant this year. What sorcery does Gonzaga <laughs> use to seemingly always win the tournament? It's so annoying. Uh, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I have a feeling either David, Alicia, or David and Alicia agree with my take. Or into witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> They're tired they of Gonzaga think, winning everything. They think too. Gonzaga is using witchcraft <laughs> to win the tournament. Well, use more three pointers. Uh, that's what I say. All yeah. right. All right, coming up, did BYU just get another win over Utah in the Pac-12? I think they did. Yes, we'll show you. And Jeff Judkins discusses the NCAA tournament ahead for the women's team. What now? This is BYU Sports Nation. And now, introducing your Mountain America All-Stars. Out of BYU, Alex, Alex Marcello, and Shaylee Gonzalez. Thanks for the warm welcome. So, is this where we get the BYU card? But of course. The only place you can. This is really cool. Yeah, but mine's better. No way. Get your BYU <laughs> card from Mountain America today. It's perfect for students, alumni, and super fans. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. On the basic level, we offer transportation. We carry four wheels, tailgates, and a place to rest your rump. Beyond that, we provide adventures, opportunities, and jobs well done. So perhaps our favorite offering is our full line of trucks, including the new Nissan Titan. Right off I-15, Tim Daly Nissan Southtown and the popular full-size Nissan Titan. Think Nissan. Think Tim Daly. Andy is new this season. Yeah, she's awesome. Very capable and very big-hearted. It's so amazing to be a part of this. I mean, to travel around the world and learn so much from others while we can participate in their goals in meaningful ways. Yeah, we like to tease her. You know, it's natural, though, being the new girl and all. Yeah, she hit the ground running. Yeah, she did. I hope the show can inspire others to get involved and open their eyes to the people around them. Yeah, she looks small, but she's super tough. Doesn't like snakes, though. Yeah, that's for sure. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU Volleyball looks to bounce back at home this weekend against Concordia. Watch the match live Friday at 9 Eastern on BYU TV and the app. we got a uh, long losing streak to snap, so let's go. We're uh, live in Studio B with your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. Jeremy Jordan alongside Gonzaga hating Jason Shepard. <laughs> Spencer Linton spoke to women's basketball coach Jeff Judkins after yesterday's West Coast Conference title game. How are the Cougars feeling about the NCAA tournament seating now? Here's that conversation with Coach Judkins. Coach, you hit a number of historic marks this season, 26 wins, most ever in BYU women's basketball history. Number 15 rankings, the highest you've ever climbed in the rankings. But obviously, every loss is disappointing. Come down to Vegas, you're losing the title game. So how are you balancing what you've accomplished this season with the immediacy of, of losing that championship game? <laughs> well, it's hard. 
uh, you know, uh, I mean, when the seasons are with you, look back and you enjoy all what you've accomplished. When it's going on right now, you you get a little discouraged. Like we've had, we've had so many great things go for us, and tonight just just wasn't wasn't meant to be. You know, we it comes down to who makes plays and who hits shots, uh, and they 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 did it today, and, and we didn't. But you can't take away the 26 and three. You can't t take away the conference champ. You can't take away that you know we've been ranked most of the year. You can't take that away and. And this will fire these guys up. I promise you, we'll, we'll get back. Yeah, that was my next question is, even though it is disappointing, what does that do for your team mentally when you leave here with a bad taste? And how do you use that as an advantage going into the NCAA tournament? Well, they say a lot of teams have to be hungry. That's what's going to happen. It's going to make us hungry. We, we, we got smacked in the face. We got knocked down. Are we going to get back up and dust ourselves off and say, hey, you know, we're a really good team. We've been good, and we're going to learn from this, and we're going to compete, and we're going to do what we need to do. When you don't make shots, coaches say, hey, you know, defense, physicality, there are things that you can do. What could you have done more tonight, even though the shots weren't falling, to maybe make this game a little bit closer? I probably should have isolated my best players more and try to let them, but they just sat everybody in the paint and said, "Go." you know, I mean, their game plan tonight was, don't let Shaylee, don't let Paisley beat us. If somebody's going to beat us, it's somebody else. And that's great. And there's been many nights that people have done that and, and players have all stepped up and done it. Um, but tonight we just we just didn't hit shots and we had them. We had open looks and we missed them. We missed them easy. And then offensively we got, especially the first of the game, we, got, we let them get too many easy baskets early where they build momentum, they build confidence. When we played him in Provo, we really locked into him early. And I think that, you know, we, we kind of said, hey, no, you're not getting that tonight. As you push forward and anticipate what type of a seeding that you're going to receive in the NCAA tournament, I know there's been a lot of talk somewhere from four to a six. You told us earlier, hey, if we win the WCC tournament, we probably deserve a four. Where do you think you're going to end up on Selection Sunday when all is said and done? They'll probably put us to six. Um, we probably got, you know, I thought if we won, like you said, I thought we'd be a four, maybe, maybe a five, but a four. Now losing will probably move to a six. How do you feel about that six seed line? Because I'm already hearing BYU fans say, hey, that's a tough six seed for a three seed to draw and an 11 seed in the first round for that matter. How do you feel about the six seed? It just depends who the team we match up with, you know, in that bracket. Whoever we match up, if our team matches good with them, that's all that matters because once you start the NCAA tournament, the seeding means nothing. It just becomes who you're, who's your next opponent. So I think that's the key to it. What do you learn in a game like this that's going to help you prepare for whatever team you face in the NCAA? We have to be physical. Um, the NCAA teams are big, strong, and physical. So we, we have to, we're kind of undersized a little bit, but we're strong and we're smart and we're tough. And we just have to get a little bit better at that. And, I need to do a better job as a coach to get my team better defensively in the post. That's something we're going to work on for sure. Jeff Judkins is with us on BYU Sports Nation. The Cougars losing the championship game to Gonzaga, 71-59. Uh, I know it's, again, because you're just so recently removed from a bad taste and a disappointing loss, but what would you say your team has done best to this point in the season? Boy, I would say share the ball and... Um, and trust in each other, no matter how hard it is. Know that somebody's got your back. And uh, it's funny, they scored 70 points today. They, in two games, they barely scored 70 points. So it's just it's just one of those nights, and, and this team will learn from it. Again, at the day removed from the Portland win, but, I mean, you did beat the Pilots, so you get a measure of revenge against them. Do you take any solace in that? Is there, is there like a, is there some solace or a moral victory there that you, you got one back against the Pilots? Well, that's nice, but we would have we would have given up something to win the championship right. here. You know, Gonzaga's a proud program, too. You know, they're like us, and um, it's, fun to, it's fun to compete against each other. When you were in the locker room, walk us through the morale of the team following the loss. They were a little down, and so I, I told them, get their heads up, be proud. You're, you're conference champs. You, we didn't have to win this game to go to the NCAA tournament. We're in the tournament, um, and, we're, and, you know, we've done a lot of things together. 
we've gone through some really great times and we've had a few lows this year and let's 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 go after it and let's get back finally if you're pitching your team to the ncaa tournament what would you say to the committee about the team that you have coached and that you feel like they are right now <laughs> i'd say we i you better watch out for us you know i think we're a dangerous person to play because we've got a lot of weapons. We have a lot of people that can do it. And not everybody plays this three times a year like Gonzaga, you know. And uh, so it'll be, it'll be fun playing somebody different. Coach, you've got 451 wins. Um, <laughs> how, how do you feel about that number when you assess uh, just your entire career? I mean, I, I know that uh, you're still focused on this season, but, I mean, 451 is, is a pretty special number. It is. It's never thought I'd have that many. Never thought I'd be in one university as long as I've been, um, it means two things. Well, three things. It means great players, great coaches, and great university. That's what it means. You know, I have all the support from my administration of letting me recruit the players I need to. They, they support me in my decisions, and I have coaches that work hard, that spend the hours in trying to find the players that fit the system, and I got players that can, they know how to play. And they take, they take coaching, they listen and they do what they're supposed to do. Here's to at least a few more wins on the resume this year. Should we shoot for that? Yeah, let's shoot for some more wins. <laughs> Hopefully six more. <laughs> Thanks, Chuddy. Congratulations Thanks on a great so season to this Thanks, point. Spencer, appreciate you. Jeff Judkins with Spencer Linton yesterday after the championship game. Okay, a couple of notes from that. He feels like they're a six seed. <laughs> dangerous six seed gosh look maybe and, you and want then, to avoid the five because how many upsets 12 five we see it all the time i don't know on the women's side if it's the same as the men but you know, maybe it'll work out for me and he said we are a dangerous team the only concern i have with being a six and not a five is now you're playing a three and not a four sure in the second round um and you're playing on someone's home court anyway in the women's tournament it's not neutral site the whole time it's home courts the first two rounds. Correct. Then it goes neutral side, I believe, in the regionals. So we are a dangerous team, he said. If BYU makes the Sweet 16, who knows? Sometimes you need a moment to wake up and, and whatever. Sometimes you don't. Uh, Danny Ainge was in studio with us a couple weeks ago, and the year before, 81 and 80, they lost in, uh, I think, the first round or something, or maybe it was the second. And I asked Danny, did you need that to do what you did in 81? And I, he said, I wouldn't say that. So they didn't need that. But perhaps, like, Gonzaga smashed St. Mary's last night because a week ago or a week and a half ago, yeah. they lost that game, and now they're yeah. the same. Gonzaga makes this crazy run right after they lose to BYU after being number one. Like, sometimes you need that moment where it's like, oh, we're not as good as we thought. We've, we've got to really dial it in. I hope that's the case with the women, that they go, oh, Nope, we need, to, we need to refocus. We need to get our defense better. we got to knock down some open shots. Yeah, boom, boom, into the Sweet 16. You don't always need that, but sometimes groups do. Well, I think what's interesting, if you look at – and one of the storylines with this basketball team we've talked about all season was how prolific the offense has been and how big the margins of victory have been. The last two games for BYU, they scored exactly 59 points. That is the third fewest yes. – for the entire year, and it's happened twice at the end of the season. So, obviously, teams are and, – and sometimes you can uh, attribute that to you get into the postseason and defense is much more important than it is during the regular season or it's, it's, it's you know, I, I always say like it should be important all year, but for whatever reason, you get into postseason and it just seems to ramp up. So, that's got to get better. But I, I agree with Jeff Judkins. You know, hopefully his team – can use this as motivation because I know in talking with him yesterday, last year they were upset they did not beat Arizona and advance on to the Sweet 16. They felt they should have won that game. And that was a catalyst for why a lot of them came back because there were some, you know, that could have moved on. Now they had the extra COVID year, which helped, but that was sort of a rallying cry that they, they felt like they were better than what they showed last year and wanted to come out and prove it. Now they get the opportunity to do that, and I'm really excited to see what they can do with that opportunity. Absolutely. Last year in that game, Paisley Harding is playing with a broken hand that yep. she sustained in the first round against who? Rutgers? I'm trying to remember. Um, yes. Th this just in on Twitter, by the way, at Mean Uncle Dave. <sighs> are, you, are you mean, Dave? Uh, one year later, and we still wonder who at Gonzaga hurt Jason. What do you mean? Who? So, so what happened? Was there an incident? You mean, all the, you mean all the losses? <laughs> in men's hoops? Oh, apparently in every in everyone. Are you gonna? Are you going to do this with? Uh, 
you know, if there uh, some dominant teams in the Big 12. There's you, going to be dominant going, teams in the Big 12. Right. Give uh, it some you, time. Like Kansas Once the, we're just Baylor. happy to be here wears off, then the real, <laughs> the real, okay, rival, the, the real rivalries start to begin. Who do you think's the going to be the the one the rival BYU? It's not going to be Utah. There's no forced Utah Colorado situation here. Um, but who do you think will be I like don't the know. first? That's going to be fun. Rival? That's actually I think one of the things I'm excited to see is who actually turns out to be the conference rivals. I think it's going to be West Virginia. Just kidding. Um, Look, it could very Mountain easily. Mountain Man versus Mountaineers. Look, it could be it could be Baylor. That that game gave us a hint that it this could, could be, be a, Iowa State. I think it might be Baylor because of the Utah Housewives going to Magnolia mm. Lanes. Like, hey, that's Look, a trip. We it could take. also be Houston right? because I it's go on that trip. the two Cougars, Cougars in red versus the Cougars in blue. That could be TCU. Like yes. I, that's why. I, I, but that stuff has to happen organically. Yes, yes. You cannot go in no, saying they're going to be. I want the league to dictate it. You cannot have the mountain rival or whatever the heck Utah <laughs> and Colorado call their rivalry. Bullsby's like, hey, <laughs> you in Houston, it's called the cat fight, and you must do <laughs> No. Uh, are you going to do this with Baylor in Kansas and Texas Tech? Or are you just like, I don't, oh, I I don't, hate I it. don't know. I don't know. Because I, I guarantee those first couple of years when Kansas or Baylor go to the Final Four, we're like, dude. We know them. Yeah. It's a friend from work. Yeah. Rep, rep like, in the, yeah. yeah. Rep in the 12. <laughs> yeah. Is that what we're going to Which call? we always do. Can we say that as church member? Rep in the 12? We always do that. The 12? Like the Quorum of the 12 Apostles? As well, opposed I, I to meant, the Big 12? I meant, but you could understand how it could work both ways. Correct. Yes, but I was referencing the conference. And then when there are 70 teams, that gets even weirder. Mm-hmm. What's coming up? All right, this coming got, up. This got way out of hand. All right, speaking of the committee, Jerem and I become a committee of two. Mm. I like this. Yes. Uh, we're going to discuss whether we like Gonzaga again. No, just kidding. <laughs> Is it time to embrace an NIT one seed? I was obligated to read that because I hate that. <laughs> this is BYU Sports Nation, the home of the NIT. Gosh, I hate that. such a difference in our lives. I think really helped mold us as to as to who we are. And so when we had that opportunity and, and came back to Boise and found out there was an active chapter, we thought, okay, that's something that I can really get behind and get involved in. We want to promote the BYU experience all over the, the, the region. We want people who leave BYU to still stay connected. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. I don't think I've ever turned on anything from BYU TV and not found myself smiling. I think it's just really inspiring just seeing people help one another. It helps me show my kids good examples of the way that we should live. I really like Studio C because we can all laugh together. It's actually something that makes us reconnect and brings us closer to our family. I love BYU TV. <laughs> BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. By the way, we've already planned out all of next week's trending. 19th ranked BYU Gymnastics hosts Arizona on Saturday. Watch all the hits and sticks live at 2 Eastern on BYU TV and the app. Wait, I thought they had Senior Day already, but they have another home meet? Look, I'm, I, I'm a little confused I'm on there. Burgundy here. I just read you what's just on read the script. It. Thank you. 
He is Jason. I am Jerem, and this is BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show, sorry, I'll mute that. Get an email. Got an email. Email Jason. Maybe it'll pop up. (laughs) Get great content throughout the day. Follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Let's whip it. Cook Whip Round is presented by Maris, your integrated container logistics company, enabling global trade for a growing world. All right, the all tournament team was announced yesterday, which typically happens once the tournament is complete. Uh, it is a five member team Nimhart, Temi, Holmgren, Kuzi, Shabazz are on the all tournament team. Should Fuseni Traore. Oh, look at you. Yeah, have been considered for the all tournament team. No. Uh, those five deserved it. Foose was probably one of the first out. He had a, a tremendous tournament. Keeping up two, with the committee phrasing. Two, two double doubles. But the eye test. Uh, no, those there are three zags there. One gale force wind and one, and one dawn. Yeah. I, I don't have any problem with the all tournament team. I, I, th- I think yeah. they got it right. I don't have any issue with it whatsoever. By the way, Tommy Cousy uh, has turned into a tremendous player. Last year I said on the air, if Tommy Cousy is your best player, you're not a tournament team. Well, last year that was the case for St. Mary's. He uh, got way better. In the current NIT bracketologies, I'm so sad we have to even say that. BYU is either a one or two seed. Is there any question they'll be a one or two seed in the NIT? Look, if it turns out that BYU ends up in the NIT, one seed, baby. Let's go. I'm all in. One seed. And then we discuss the stupid question. Is it better to win the NIT or be out in the first round of the NCAA tournament? Monday, Monday's time. Again, I've already said we've, we've determined the trending for next week already. Oh, it's such a stupid question. No, absolutely BYU should be a one seed in the NIT. Absolutely. I don't care to know what an, a one seed needs to be or is. I never will care about that. If you're always in the NIT, sure, let's play, let's win, whatever. But it is just hot trash. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, discussed rule changes. Let's discuss rule changes. Okay. The NCAA Rules Committee proposes that all second half targeting ejections would be eligible for appeal, allowing the potential of a player not missing the first half of the next game. I love this idea, by the way. That brings in, though, what would be the first college football rule that you would propose be changed? That's probably it. I don't have a massive issue with a ton of the rules. Um, I, I, I too. I wonder at some point if we say, you know what, let's let's comply with the NFL and go two feet and no first down stoppage on the clock. Mm-hmm. Although I do like the stoppage on the first down. I think it just gives you a shot at the end of the game because the quarterbacks are not as good in college at the NFL where they can just get it off like your boy Patrick Mahomes did in what 11 seconds mm-hmm. went down the field, got that field goal or whatever. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't have a massive rule change I want. There are two rule changes that have always bothered me. Uh, but since I have to pick one, I have never understood the when a when a player is down without being touched, the play is dead. Amen. That's a great uh, one. That's dumb to Love me. Love that. That is that is dumb to Let, me. Let's sync up with the NFL. Yes. Yeah, so let's one. and yep. and honestly, the other one is also an NFL rule. I would go to the NFL rule on. Um, uh, pass interference I would say it's a spot foul because right now in college if you're beat deep all you have to do instead of giving up 50 yards you know what? is get the foul and you only give up 15 I love both of those so so those are the two rules immediately out of the yes. game but if I have to pick one yes. to start with I would probably go if you're not touched when you when you go down get back up and go until you're touched the other one would be tackled. would be a fifth down just need a fifth down just <laughs> and then if, that doesn't, if that's not enough Colorado's score, like we love it sixth down <laughs> yes <laughs> Okay, BYU Equipment sent out swag boxes to alumni in the NFL. This is perhaps the greatest moment of the show. Prepare yourself. Tyson Williams posted this photo of a BYU shirt on former Utah quarterback Tyler Huntley, who called BYU day so poopy after the 2019 game. Well, well, well. You look good in blue there, Tyler, who had a nice season as a backup with the Ravens, by the way. Uh, did Tyson Williams just account for another BYU win over Utah in the Pac-12? Absolutely. That would make the total 19-3-1 and is the record <laughs> against the Pac-12. You know, here's what I love about this. Not only, August. not only do you get to see Tyler Huntley in a BYU shirt, but I still love the fact that Tyson Williams played less than four games at BYU. And... He's all That's about who it. he's associated with. Yes. Is BYU Not and the I love that. Not I the love cuts. that. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, this must have been a super delayed lost bet <laughs> from the BYU versus Utah. Like, 
Tyler Huntley just like, kept dodging him. He's like, ah, he sees him, he goes the other way in the hallway. Yeah, Tyson, Tyson in that bet was going to win no matter what, because he's like, yeah, I was there for like four games. Sure, I'll wear a Utah shirt, whatever. Yeah. But Tyler was the quarterback for several years. So yeah, that's hilarious. I don't know why it took until like March 8th to pay up on the September 11th. But here's, look, here's the thing though. Sometimes content, the best things come to those who wait. That's not always the case, okay. but yeah. All right, so uh, last night, you and I both went to see The Batman. Now, when you had the and that, that's it's correct. Yes, yes, and by the way, I am calling you The Germ. The, the Batman. Okay, so we both went to see that movie last night. Yes. An unplanned ended up at the same theater, yeah. same showing of the movie. Does that mean that we technically went on a double date? Well, it would have to be on a triple date. Because my wife and I were with another you, couple. You were the, okay, so I'm going to say it, we did Our not homies. go on a ch double or triple date because you had your wife. You guys were with another couple, husband and wife. Yes. I was there Dex with had my, a baby, too. We I was there with people. my son. Had I been there with my wife, yeah. triple date. Would have been a triple date. It would have been a triple date. Minimal interaction, of course, be because you were away from me. Not yes, we were not sitting together. Yeah. I was in row N, you were in row L, so yeah. we were fairly close. 20 through 23. Yes, but yeah, you walk in, the Megaplex, the doors open, and uh, the first, the is, first face I see is that guy. I'm on the ground, I'm like, yeah, baby! So yeah, by the way, not no spoilers, nothing. Did you like the Batman? Yes. Uh, yes, I, I enjoyed it very much. Yes. I enjoyed it, yes. despite being three hours, and it's a legit three-hour movie. I have time for three-hour things now that two-hour church is here. I have time for three-hour things. Okay. Yeah. All right. I like that uh, line of thinking. All right, coming up, our rising shout-out to a guy spreading the gospel at BYU. And we form a two-man selection committee. We look at blind resumes, see where BYU stands among the candidates. That's coming up. We should, should we have, like, ties on for this? This is BYU Sports Night. Quick crack. Wash all you want. Don't drive dirty. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV, to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford, think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. I'm a bit rough around the edges. This has been one of the most beautiful weeks of my life. I've never felt so much love. What you're doing is, is something beautiful. Thank you. I will forever be thankful because I found real happiness. And that's within the community that we have made. And they made such a huge impact on my life. These are the type of people that really make the world a better place. Thank you, guys. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU baseball heading to Texas to play Oklahoma State in a three-game series at Globe Life Field, home of the Texas Rangers, coming up Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Listen to Game 1 on Thursday, 7.30 Eastern on BYU Radio 107.9 FM and the app. Those black uniforms with royal trim yeah. on Saturdays for the baseball team? It's amazing. Holy shnikes. So and they wear good. white pants with it, which makes it pop a little bit more. Everybody's looking at my white pants. Welcome skit. back to BYU Sports Nation live from Studio <laughs> B. A little Fallon. Go check it out. Okay, time for us to form a two-person selection committee. 
We're only going to look at four data points here for a couple of teams. But we're going to, BYU's in here somewhere. We don't know exactly where. We'll point it out when we see it, we think. But we're going to look at four teams and choose two of them twice. Okay? So we've got net, quad one uh, record, non-conference strength of schedule, and overall record. Okay? okay and let's, let's make this very clear. This is not a blind resume where we kind of know who's who. We, we were not we involved know. in this. We don't know. We do not know who these teams are. Okay, so throw up the first four, and we have to pick two teams here, and we will look at these four data points. Okay, here we go. Okay, team one, two, three, four. Um, okay, we have to pick two, Jason, so it depends what we value. Again, these are only four data points. The committee looks at a lot more, but this is okay, just for the sake right of argument Right out of the gate, here. team one for me goes in. Net 37, one quad one win, and look, one Look, I don't like the why, one and why, five versus why, quad ones, yes. but I like the fact that it's a top 40 net and the and non-conference, the non-conference strength strength schedule, is, yeah, is it's the best of those four. Far. Yeah, so so we agree team one is one of them. Team one yes? is one of the two. Okay. Um, I actually don't mind team two. Okay. Now, the, the non-conference strength of schedule is close to 300. They are top 50 net, but I like the fact that, unlike the others, they they were at least 500 in their quad ones. They only played four, though. That, I, they didn't I get play it. a I ton. Get it. So they, they, this is clearly a non-power team. Uh, maybe so so a, a right Dayton now I'm type. leaning one and two. Okay. Um, I like three because the net is 44. Mm-hmm. They played 10 quad one games. They won three. Again, we talked to Tom a couple years ago. They value quantity of uh, quad one as well. The non-conference schedule is only 24 behind the one that you were saying. So okay. it's not I, like there's I, a big you know difference. What? I, I, will go with the, I will go with you because I do like You'll the rationale of one more quad one win, and it does, and they have a, they're five spots higher in the net. So I'm good if we go one and, and three. And by the way, these eight teams we're looking at are among the 16 on the bubble, according to Joe Lenardi. Last four buys, first four out, last four in, next four out. Okay. Go ahead and reveal. So one and three are our choices. One and three, yep. Go ahead and reveal what teams these are. Okay, Virginia Tech and is, is a fourth team out, okay. according to Lenardi. He has uh, SMU as the last team in, which we didn't go with. Indiana is the first team out, which we went with. And then Wake Forest is actually uh, eighth in. So we were completely off. So we picked the two teams to Lenardi. That are out. Yes, we picked two of the first, the first and fourth team out. Lenardi has... Uh, SMU and Wake Forest as one of the eight last eight teams in. In fact, the first and eighth. So we are immediately fired from the committee. Or, or we should be on the committee because we used common sense. He, yes, he values, uh, he must value different things. And again, we're looking at four data points. Right. We're not looking at how they played Correct. recently. We're not looking at uh, overall net strength of schedule. We're not looking at quad two, three, four. Do they have bad losses? Um Yes, what's the best win? Again, we're just looking at a couple of simple things. Okay, that was fun. Okay. Round two. Round two. Let's Round take two. a look Four at... Four more teams, yep. blind resume here. Okay. okay, immediately we can identify that BYU is team four. So we're all on the same picture. Net 55, four and six, one of six. That is BYU. Mm-hmm. BYU among these four has the best non-conference strength of schedule. That's what Mark Pope yes. is pulling for. And talk to Spencer about is we have a great non-conference strength of schedule. Now, you'd think 106, that doesn't sound great. You'd be surprised. <laughs> These other three teams are on the bubble. Look at that. There's a couple in the 300s before. Now we got a 292, a 203, a 172. Okay, four quad one wins feels good, right? Now, this group's got some quad one games. Yes. Okay, so what do we value here the most? Okay. Net, quad one, non BYU actually looks okay in this because of the non-conference strength. Uh, honestly, if that's team, what you yeah, value. Yeah. So I'm going team four in this with with what you I'm, would I, with what I'm looking at. I'm taking team four. Okay. The question Why? is Why? what's well. Number one, the non-conference strength of schedule is by far the best. Okay. And you know the net's 55 out of this group. It's it's second best. Okay. So that's that's why I'm going. So team four for me is in. Do you agree with that? That we can at least agree on four? Or do you I'm not want... sure yet. Okay. I so... like team two because I like eleven quad one games played and and over five hundred records. See, and I'm willing That's to take good. I'm willing to go ten spots lower or higher, however lower I guess, net to get the extra 
quad one win. So I, I don't have a yes. problem taking team two over team one for that reason. I feel like team two is, uh, you know, a, a team that plays in a, in a good league, obviously that played 11 quad. But one look games. at team three, easily the second best non-conference strength, the schedule at 172, the others and second best net. Yep. So, but so tied from, for third fewest correct. quad one wins. Okay. So, so right now I'm leaning team two and team four. That's what I'm leaning right now. Let's do it just for the okay. sake of conversation. Team two, team four. Those are our choices. Two and four. Okay. Who are the teams? Four is BYU. Just so we all know. Uh, okay. Creighton is the first one. Creighton is uh, seven in, according to Lenardi. Rutgers is the second team in. Wyoming, third team in. BYU is the second team out. Wyoming has a chance to better itself, by the way. And, and so do several of these teams, of course, at the end of this week. Mountain West Conference might be a three or four bid league. They've got some quad ones left for them, so they can better their resume. BYU just has to sit and watch, and that's where it's not going to go well. Interesting exercise here. Does the committee value non-conference strength of schedule? Because if they do, that will help BYU. And BYU had enough quad one games, um, and, and that was more of a uh, you know high major, mid-major kind of conversation there, sure. minus Rutgers, who has had a – Good year in the Big Ten. They actually did something in uh, football or basketball, which is uh, something that needed to happen. So that brings us to the resume update, which we showed a little bit, but let's talk about it. Net 55, that stays. Ken Palm stays at 50. Jerry Palm, 12 seeds, still in the first Jerry, four. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. Okay, team rankings went up 0.2%. Who cares? <laughs> Bracket matrix, 14 of 141 brackets. So not really in it. Ah, he's got a shot, but it's just razor thin right now. Also, we learned that the <laughs> we don't pick like Joe Lenardi does. Again, we looked at four data points. Correct. And we did not look not, at not the not entire... Conclusive, exhaustive look here. Yeah, spectrum of numbers. Because it's not just net. It's not just quad one. But There's why more can't it to be it. just net? <laughs> Can we just do that? BCS, is that you? <laughs> is that you, BCS, over there? Oh, my gosh. What, what, I'm blanking on it. What was the RPI? Don't even get me started, <laughs> dude. RPI is the Where's RP? Worst. Where's RPI in this whole discussion? Well, can you imagine in this conversation, it's like, okay, record, RPI. Like, net at least is a metric that they worked with Google with that takes into account where you played, how you played, when you put, you know, like all these things. It's like, okay, it's at least something. It's not everything, but something. And then uh, – you, you got to look at all, all the data points and what you value and how you've been playing. And that's the thing with the committee is like you ha we have more information. I wish we had this in football. I wish we knew what they were looking at, uh, but we have no idea. It's just a 12-person committee, and we're like, oh, they chose Baylor, I guess, is the second at large. It's like, like this year, <laughs> BYU was the in the test. mix. Yeah. We had no clue right. uh, you know, what they were looking at exactly. But it's even more obviously a 68-team tournament caters way more to other teams. But again, I, I've mentioned this the last five years, the average of, uh, you know, at-large bids to non-Power 6 teams is like five teams a year. You're just going for that spot. St. Mary's will take one of those spots. The Mountain West will have a couple of those spots. The ACC is down, so there are more of those. Like, typically, they've been like a, what, six to nine team, uh, you know, entrance. And that's what BYU so has to wait to find out how many spots are actually available for them to possibly take. This year might be like a eight or ten year. Yeah. Because it's been, the ACC has been awful. Uh, granted, North Carolina got that huge wound on Saturday. We've been dogging on them. They beat Duke yeah. at Duke and ruined Coach K's final home game. How about that? All right, coming up, your elite voice. And we give credit to a, a guy who is barely at BYU but continues to be a brand ambassador. This is BYU Sports Nation. Is he an influencer? Sure.
I watch uh, BYG TV because it has good programming uh, for all family members, aligns to my values. BYU TV really does help me with my parenting. It helps me show my kids good examples of the way that we should live. No matter what you watch or listen, you always live uh, feeling better. All of us together. Hello there. Mary. This young bear needs our help. Hello. It's just one night. How would you like to come home with us? Paddington is a danger to this family. Paddington's the best thing that's ever happened to the children. I hope I don't look weird after all that. Where did you take the bear? That bear is the reason I am here. Paddington's been kidnapped! This family needed that bear every bit as much as he needed you. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is always available on demand via the free BYU TV and BYU Radio. Or download the podcast. All you need to do is Google BYU Sports Nation podcast. And while you're there, please subscribe, rate, and review the show. That was a very earnest plea. I like that. Our question of the day, which was a uh, more disappointing outcome at the West Coast Conference Tournament in Las Vegas at Toby Mac? Return of the Mac. Easily the men. Nobody Every coach in the same. country talks about how hard it is to beat any team three times in a year, and Gonzaga has an excellent women's team. They were on the bubble. They were one of the last teams in. They got in. Look, they led BYU in Spokane at the break by 15. Cougars yeah. rallied in the second half to win that game. But. Did Paisley Harding need to get stitched up again for BYU to come back and win? It's the question. <laughs> it didn't happen. Uh, women will still rock the tourney. Men will be anxiety-ridden for the next week or so. Yeah, it's true. Uh, in response uh, to our elite voice of the day, presented by Sundance Mountain Resort, Amy Jones on Twitter. The men, that game with San Francisco is likely their last shot to get into the tourney. Also, I never cheer for St. Mary's. I always want Randy Bennett to lose. Handshake hater. <laughs> <laughs> St. Mary's, I agree. It's Gonzaga that, yeah, yeah. And I know you hate this, so that's why I said, <laughs> kiss the ring, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Today's Rise and Shout Out brought to you by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. We talked about it earlier, but yes. it's so good, we're bringing it back. Yeah, Tyson Williams, spreading the love and the gospel of BYU, making Tyler Huntley pay up on a bet, <laughs> making him wear the Cougar shirt after saying BYU day so poo-poo. That, that is still one of the funniest quotes ever. <laughs> but Tyson. Day so poo-poo. He, he, he didn't even play in four <laughs> games. And he's out there promoting Texas, the Cougars. Texas felt like that against Utah after the Alamo Bowl. Right here. Our thanks to today's guest, Jeff Judkin. The conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always use hashtag BYUSN. Sorry to Dennis. For Jason, I'm Jim. Shout out to Danny Peterson. Go Cougs! we got to wait a couple more days to Selection Sunday. Let's go.